Digital media changes our ways of seeing by framing visual information when we use search engines. The internet is one of the newest ways of seeing in today's society. Through the single click of a button, we are now able to find information on anything from politics to cartoons. And all of this is accessible through search engines. Internet search engines are able to frame what we see while surfing the web, and they shape what we view as credible. This frame generally consists of the first page of results that appear when a person looks up a topic using a search engine. It is rare search engine users go to the second or third pages of results. The first page is it. It is the frame. But what happens when this frame is wrong? What if the information we find there is faulty or biased? How does that affect the way we see the world? If a person chooses to research a topic for the first time and only reads those articles that appear on the first page of a search engine's results, they are limiting their knowledge about that topic. Just as a picture frame keeps the viewer from seeing what is going on outside of the photograph, the frame of the search engine limits the information to help them draw conclusions as to how they view the world. This frame, however small it may already be, has been drastically narrowed by the practice of governmental censorship of search engines. What is search actually doing once we spend time on it? Given that we all encounter it so much, it's a very, very dramatic way of narrowing many things to a few things. And this is entirely determined by um, a private interest choice. So if a company says, we do a certain kind of search, and uh, you're going to find um, there's different ways of arranging what gets the top positions uh, over others. And that is a huge decision choice that shapes the way we proceed from I want something to here are my options and the amount of time I'm going to spend through my options. So the front page of Google, maybe even the first five positions of Google are, are always very prime real estate that are going to be subject to a lot of contention for people to get that kind of visibility. Google controls 63% of the world's internet searches, around 304 million searches per day making Google an important player when it comes to the worldwide distribution of information, and therefore explaining why it is common for governments to demand that Google censor various information from their searches, thus narrowing the frame that users can access. This image shows various websites' traffic, with the larger icons having more traffic. Traffic is the amount of views, or the number of users who access that website. As you can see, Google's icon is by far the largest. For a long time, China demanded that search engines censor sensitive information such as the Tiananmen Square massacre. If you were to Google Tiananmen Square on Google.cn, you would find beautiful pictures of Tiananmen Square. However, if you were to search the same thing on Google.com, you would be presented with a drastically different scene. This censorship affects how people view the world. If people are not properly informed, how can they view the world accurately? Google recently reversed its decision to censor its searches in China which means that China's citizens can view thousands of images that were previously kept from them by their government. These uncensored images will allow the Chinese a new outlook on their history, their rights, and their government. Another example of internet censorship is how the popular video site YouTube is forced to block some viewers' access to certain videos. For instance, citizens of Thailand are blocked from viewing videos that insult their king, for it is illegal to do so. Turkish viewers are also blocked from videos that offend Turkish secularism. And across the world, YouTube viewers are prevented from watching videos that incite violence or are explicit. By restricting the information available to citizens, governments are effectively coercing their people to see the world through a certain frame, the frame that they want it to be seen through. But, as search engines move to reduce the amount of information they censor, governments are looking to other sources to censor and frame the information found on the internet. They are turning to companies like Comcast and Verizon to censor images and the web at a network level. Some countries, such as China, already use network-level censorship. The Golden Shield Project, or the Great Firewall of China, filters all network traffic in China. Everything from blog posts to searches for democracy is filtered by this firewall. If a person were to post a blog or image on the internet that China does not approve of, it only takes a few minutes to censor it. The images that cover the internet's landscape allow us to view the world from other points of view. What makes internet censorship so dangerous is the fact that it prevents people from gaining those important external viewpoints, thus significantly narrowing the frame through which they see the world and even themselves. As one of the most popular and accessible ways to receive information, internet search engines are dramatically changing the way we see our world. Through the click of a button, we can now reach unlimited amounts of information about others and about the world. 
Unfortunately, what we see may not always be the truth due to the framing of search results. Because of this, many people are becoming misinformed about the world around them. How will this affect the future? Maybe you should Google it.